In our previous video, we've had diagonalization, where we pick numbers in a diagonal path using Omega. Then we had Omega plus 1. We're inputting even a small number such as 3, yield it's such a massive number. In this video, I'm going to show you guys more information about Omega, as they will be important later on. 1 plus Omega is not the same as Omega plus 1. Let me show you why. Let's say we have an infinite number of balls. This is Omega. When we do 1 plus Omega, we're just adding one ball to the infinite number of balls. So that doesn't make it different from infinity. But when we do omega plus 1, we're adding one ball after an infinite number of balls. We add two balls after an infinite number of balls. That's omega plus 2. Omega plus 3, omega plus 4, omega plus 5, omega plus 6, omega plus 7, we can even have an infinite number of balls after an infinite number of balls, which we know as omega times 2. Now that we know how ordinals are counted, let's get back to the fast growing hierarchy. f omega plus 1 of n already grows faster than Graham's function. So f omega plus 1 of 64 is a lot bigger than G64, which is also known as Graham's number. Now just how much faster would f omega times 2 of n be? But first, let me show you how to break down omega times 2. Omega times 2 breaks down into omega plus omega. Now pay attention to this omega. This is the closest omega to n. You diagonalize omega by turning it into an n. Now we have omega plus n of n. Let's have f omega times 2 of 3 for example. You turn omega times 2 into omega plus omega, and then you turn the closest omega into a 3. From here, we can break this down into three copies of omega plus 2. f omega plus 2 of 3, we break it down into three copies of omega plus 1. Now f omega plus 1 of 3, as we did in our earlier video, we break it down into three copies of the f omega function. This whole thing was an unimaginable number. Now f omega plus 1 of this unimaginable number, just like how we broke f omega plus 1 of 3, we do f omega of f omega of f omega of f omega unimaginable number of times. Put it back into the parenthesis, and then you do f omega plus 1 of it. We keep evaluating these functions until we reach the end. But all of this is nothing compared to omega times 2 plus 1. Let's have f omega times 2 plus 1 of 3 for example. Now what comes before omega times 2 plus 1? That's omega times 2. So you do the omega times 2 process 3 times. f omega times 2 of 3, you break it down into omega plus omega, and then you turn the closest omega into a 3. f omega times 2 of f omega plus 3 of 3, you break omega times 2 into omega plus omega, and then you diagonalize it to f omega plus 3 of 3. f omega times 2 of this massive number, we break omega times 2 into omega plus omega, then we diagonalize once again.
we can do omega times 2 plus 2, omega times 2 plus 3, so on and so forth. And then we'll reach our next limit, which is omega times 2 plus omega, which can also be written as omega times 3. Let's have f omega times 3, 4 for example. We break f omega times 3 into omega times 2 plus omega. And then we diagonalize omega to 4. If we do f omega times 100 of n, we break it down into f omega times 99 plus omega. And we diagonalize omega to n. We can keep multiplying omega like this. And then we'll reach our next limit, which is omega times omega. Which can also be written as omega squared. Let's have f omega squared of n. We turn omega squared into omega times omega. And then we turn the closest omega to n. So we have omega times n of n. But things get much more serious with the omega cubed. Let's have f omega cubed of 3. We can break omega cubed into omega times omega times omega. And these two omegas, you group them as omega squared. And this turns into omega squared times 3, which can be broken down into omega squared plus omega squared plus omega squared. Omega squared plus omega squared can be grouped as omega squared times 2. Omega squared, as we've known earlier, breaks down into omega times 3. Omega times 3 breaks down into omega times 2 plus omega. And now omega gets diagonalized to 3. This is the simplified version of omega cubed. We can have omega to the 4th, omega to the 5, omega to the 6, omega to the 7, omega to the 8th, omega to the 9th, and then we reach our next limit, which is omega to the omega. Let's have f omega to the omega of 4. That turns into omega to the 4th. Then you break it down to omega cubed times omega. Then the closest omega turns into a 4. You turn omega cubed times 4 into omega cubed times 3 plus omega cubed. You turn omega cubed omega squared times omega. This turns to omega squared times 4. Omega squared times 4 turns into omega squared times 3 plus omega squared. Then omega squared turns into omega times 4. Then finally, omega times 4 turns into omega times 3 plus omega. And then the closest omega, you turn into a 4. This is how intense f omega to the omega is. But we can even go bigger. We can have omega to the omega to the omega. We can keep exponentiating omega really. And the limit of this is epsilon naught. Which is our next infinite ordinal after omega.